so we have already discussed about uh, herpes simplex virus among the seven viruses causing oral infection the important seven viruses causing oral infections we have started about hsv herpes simplex virus and then we studied about vzv varicella zoster or zoster and then coxsackie a hsv vsv and coxsackie a and now we are going towards human papilloma virus hpv okay so as you remember from your previous classes hpv is associated with squamous cell papilloma also known as Bars or squamous papillomata, condyloma acuminatum, not acuminata, acuminatum, which are multiple white pinkish nodules. Here you can see diagram A. Focal epithelial hyperplasia, multiple painless papules, and verruca vulgaris, which are white exophytic lumps so hpv 16 and 18 sim 16 same as causing coxsackie type a 16 so there was coxsackie type a 16 causing hmfd hand foot mouth disease and here hpv 16 and 18 are associated with oropharyngeal cancer oropharyngeal oro oro oral cavity oropharyngeal cancer this group of viruses is linked with cervical cancer as well treatment what is the treatment cauterization electrocautery use an electric cautery device and cauterize this so that it does not bleed portophyllin is a drug and then there can be local surgery or removal if there is big lesions which are protruding or hanging outside or inside these are the manifestation of spv human papilloma virus very famous as you remember 8 and 11 causing genital warts 16 and 18 not only causing cervical cancer tumor but also associated with oropharyngeal cancer so oral cavity and mouth or vagina, cervical cancer, tumor, 8, 16, 18. I cannot stress more. And how to diagnose this pap smear regularly. So this is high risk papilloma virus can cause, where cancer can occur, oropharyngeal cancer, cervical cancer anal cancer, genital warts or genital warts, penile cancer in the case of male, uvular cancer. Oh, sorry, vulvar, vulvar cancer. So we have warts, oral warts hanging here and some on, this is not hairy leukoplakia. Okay, not like HIV. This, this is H HPV. Okay, then after HPV, after HSV, HSV, and then we studied fish virus. So these were viruses, right? HSV, VZV, Coxsackie, HPV. And now we go towards rubiola, Epstein Barr virus, and retrovirus. So, uh, next virus after this is rubiola, part of measles, mumps, and rubella. Part of measles, mumps, and rubella. We have measles. measles. Measles is caused by rubiola virus, right? The prodromal phase of measles may be marked by small white spots with an erythematous margin on the buccal mucosa known as coplic spot measles coplic spot but is coplic spot found in the okay so found inside the mouth oral cavity intraoral mucosa you can find that these are the erythematous margin 
spots, white spots, central white lesions, and then these are known as coplic spots. Do not forget coplic spots with rubella virus. Okay, a few days later, the maculopapular rash of measles appear. So the prodromal phase of measles may be marked by small white spots with an edematous margin on the buccal mucosa known as coplic spots. And then a few days later, the maculopapular rash of measles appear, usually behind the ears, then spreading to the face and trunk. So where it starts, usually behind the ears, from the face, and then to, towards the face and towards the trunk. What is this? This is the second maculopapular rash, which is appearing. On the right, okay, on the right side, we see measles is a highly contagious infectious disease caused by measles virus. The measles vaccine is infected at the pre preventing the disease at the time of birth, MMR. We have symptoms, fever, red blotchy rash first appears on the forehead, usually behind the ears. Then we have red inflamed eyes, runny nose, hacking cough with the voice and sore throat with typical voice, right? <laughs> Complex spot inside the mouth, pathognomic. This is pathognomic. And then we have complications, pneumonia. It can lead to pneumonia. It can lead to severe diarrhea and cephalitis, blindness and ear infection or encephalitis, how you want to pronounce. These are the complications I'm going to give MMR, measles, mumps, rubella, vaccine at regular intervals when the child is still a child. We need to treat this because it may have 40% chance of neurological defects. So let's just imagine out of 100 children who got measles, 40% will, will or may develop neurological defects, deficits, right? So you should know this disease, right? That's why we are trying to learn here and has a 15% mortality rate, but people are not getting serious. Oh, that's so wrong. Can we have mouse please? Okay, so measles. So how to prevent measles? We give a vaccination because there is no absolute treatment or definite treatment for this. We have fever, non prolific cough, runny nose, sore throat, conjunctivitis, red skin rash. Other than red skin rash or the disease were like prodromal syndrome, flu-like symptoms. Everything was flu-like symptoms. When the rash appeared, the mother thought, okay, something is wrong. He went to doctor. She went to doctor. Protected by vaccination for infants at the age of nine to 12 months. Infants age of nine to 12 months. Okay, I hope you remember. And then we have deafness, blindness, pneumonia, and death. These are the complications and these are the symptoms. We had scopic spots inside. What is the difference between chicken pox and measles? Measles start at forehead or behind the ears. The red blotchy rash appears first on the forehead, whereas chickenpox, the red spots or the rash first appear on the chest, face, and back. The difference, chest, thoracic cavity, that not cavity, the thorax, and then facial first appearance, the difference. Both have fever. Both may have headache, both may have tiredness, fatigue, runny nose, but runny nose more seen in the measles. These chickenpox spots turn into blisters and then they crust. You remember they were vesicular, they erupt, vesicular blisters erupt, form superficial ulcers, and then crust will be the crustacean will be formed. There will be crest. But coplic spot, we have inside the mouth. So this can be a difference. Now we go to the second last virus important for all cavity, which is Epstein-Barr virus, causing infectious mononucleosis, glandular fever. Why it is known as glandular fever? Because, all, because most of the glands will be 
swollen and red, like tonsils is a gland, swollen. And then we have slivery glands, lymph nodes. Okay. Absent bar virus, infectious mononucleosis and glandular fever. One of my favorite. Glandular fever, also known as infectious mononucleosis, mostly in children and young adults, spreaded by infected saliva. That's why it is also known as the kissing disease. So you know three or four names. Infectious mononucleosis, glandular fever, the kissing disease caused by absent bar virus. What are the clinical features? Varies widely in severity. It can be on the both sides of the edge. Very severe, or maybe it is asymptomatic. Presence with a sore throat. The other one which presented with, a, with the history with the sore throat was Oksaki A virus. This absent bar virus, the glandular fever, presents with a sore throat, generalized lymph adenopathy. The limbs are swollen. Fever, generalized mean all over the body. Then there will be fever, headache, general malaise and often a maculopapular rise. The third rash, the third maculopapular rash we, have, we are studying is the absent bar virus. Everything is swelling. Everything is swelling. The pet of splenomegaly have, have been seen in absent bar virus, glandular fever, infectious mononucleosis. Oral manifestation. We have oral manifestation. Why we have oral manifestation? Because we are studying under oral cavity disease, all manifestations may mimic primary herpetic gingival stomatitis, primary HSV. Or primary HSV, it mimics, which mimics abstain bar virus. With widespread oral ulceration and addition to petechial or petechial hemorrhages, pinpoint or pin size head point you know a common pin he has a head common pin head that size petechial hemorrhages especially at the junction of hard and soft palate not over all over the hard and soft palate because all of the hard and soft palate was covered by coxsackie a because tongue was covered by tongue was coated by hsv and now at the junction of heart and soft palate, unlike Coxsackie A, which is pathognomic feature for absent bar bar virus, glandular fever, infectious mononucleosis. Do you remember? Let's go back. You see this, you remember this? Coxsackie A, herpangina type A, heart and soft palate, not distinguished, but now, Infectious mononucleosis, glandular fever, kissing disease at the junction of hard and soft palate, pathognomic feature, and there can be bruising. Causes. What is the cause of glandular fever, infectious mononucleosis? Already written, absent bar virus is the major cause, but cytomegalovirus and toxoplasmosis can also give a similar picture. How to do diagnosis? Mono spot, mono. Infectious mononucleosis, monospot test. And then CMV and toxomalosis, you can do viral, viral titers, titration or PCR. Treatment, symptomatic except toxoplasmosis, which may respond to sulfur drugs. So toxoplasmosis, if gives the similar picture of glandular fever, you can give Sulfur drugs. What are sulfur drugs? Sulfonamide antibiotics, including sulfur methoxazole, time methoprim, or sulfisoxazole. And then ampicillin should not be given. You see, there's an underline. Underline, I either bold it if it's important, if it's very important, I turn it into red. But underline, there is something odd going on. What is the odd situation here? Ampicillin, penicillin should not be given to patients with a sore throat who may have glandular fever as it is inevitably produces an unwanted response ranging from a rash to anaphylaxis. Ampicillin, not given. We have a sore throat. Maybe it have some rash. 
ampicillin contraindicated because it has a reaction rash to anaphylaxis. Type one, type one, right? Opportunistic infection on the tongue, mucosa by EBV Epstein Barr virus, is thought to be pathological mechanism behind hairy leukoplakia, the turning of roughness and turning the tongue white, hairy leukoplakia, which is found in transplant HIV positive patients. Later in HIV patients, we'll see oral manifestation of HIV, oral infections, we will see hairy leukoplakia. EBV. Epstein Barr virus was thought was thought in the past to be behind hairy leukoplakia, but no more. Epstein Barr virus symptoms: dizziness, headache, fatigue, sore throat, usually severe, swollen lymph nodes, swollen, 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 swollen tonsils, swollen lymph nodes, glandular fever, glands are swollen, swollen tonsils, swollen lymph nodes. You don't say anything else. You say swollen tonsils, swollen lymph nodes. I will agree because you cannot. You cannot not say, you cannot not say headache is not there, fatigue or malaise or sore throat is not there, right? Sweating, loss of appetite, because weakness or chills, because when fevers, there is chills, fever and chills, there is headache, fatigue, all the flu like symptoms, prodromal syndrome. And then extra in glandular fever is swollen tonsils, because glands, swollen, swollen tonsils, and swollen lymph nodes. Whitish. Coating on the tonsils. Spleen is enlarged. Hepatosplenomegaly. Liver is enlarged. Hepatosplenomegaly is seen in infectious mononucleosis. Infectious mononucleosis. Kissing disease. So, hepatosplenomegaly, swelling of lymph nodes, and swollen tonsils. These are the diagnoses of the viral infections and the key distinguishing features you can study on your own if you want. And these are some complications of infectious mononucleosis. If you want to study, you can. Let's go to the last virus, retrovirus HIV. So HIV, we have mouth ulcers often appear during the acute stage and can be early signs of HIV infection. So we have some mouth ulcers which are early signs, which can be early signs of HIV infection. The most common symptom that in which individuals experience is dry mouth zeostomia, which increases the risk of infection and tooth decay because the saliva is not there to protect the infections, oral cavity internally and the tooth and the teeth. HIV positive patients are also more likely to develop oral herpes, oral herpes, HIV positive patients. Some of the most common oral problems, oral problems related to HIV. HIV have many signs and symptoms, many reported signs and symptoms, but we are talking about the problems or signs and symptoms or clinical features which are only restricted to oral cavity, including chronic dry mouth, gingivitis, because there is no saliva, dry mouth, bone loss around the teeth, known as periodontitis, canker sores, oral warts, fever blisters, oral candidiasis, thrush, oral thrush, pseudomonas, and then he hairy leukoplakia, which was not caused by HP, H, Epstein Barr virus SBB, caused by HIV, HIV patients we can see hairy leukoplakia, which causes a rough white patch on the tongue. And then we have dental caries. This is by clinical picture of HIV. So we, on the left side, we have HIV AIDS infographics. How it is transmitted by sharing, injecting equipment, contaminated blood transfusion, unprotected sex from mother to baby, vertical transmission, insect bites, HIV is not transmitted by insect bites through food, through toilet and showers, and through cloths and towels. It is spread by direct exchange of the fluids. Exchange of the fluids. Blood is a fluid. Contaminated blood, sharing injections, unprotected sex, fluid. And we have symptoms, fever, infection, oral cavity, infection, canker sores, 
sore throat, weight loss because of the loss of appetite, rash, nausea, joint pains, increased sweating. So this is how we... Okay, now let's go to the bacterial infections. Next is oral infections, bacterial infections. These are dental caries, gingivitis, periodontitis, pharyngitis, and tonsillitis, syphilis, scarlet fever, and tuberculosis. These are medically important. Some of them we have studied previously. Some of them you have idea from other subjects. For now, we will focus on scarlet fever and tuberculosis because these two have special manifestation in the oral cavity and tongue, which are scarlet fever, strawberry tongue. You cannot forget S as strawberry tongue, right? And then raspberry tongue. So S strawberry, you cannot forget. Which is which is one of one another disease having the same manifestation as a strawberry tongue. Which other disease ha also has strawberry tongue? Kawasaki disease. Perfect. What is Kawasaki disease? Uh, does it has a, a manifestation on the heart? Yes, sir. Sir, coronary artery disease uh, come and cause a coronary artery disease in children, sir. Kawasaki disease. Yes, sir. Perfect. So you have a child. So you have a child and then who was this guy? I don't know. Abbas. Abbas. Okay. So Abbas, we have a child and in there is uh, MI, myocardial infarction, infarction in child. We, we usually do not see MI in child, right? So we have an MI in child and you open his mouth and there is strawberry tongue, Kawasaki. You cannot... Forget two things about Kawasaki. Strawberry tongue, am I in a child? Okay. So scarlet fever. Now you can go up. Okay. So scarlet fever is an infectious disease caused by a bacteria four to eight years old due to delayed type hypersensitivity to the streptococcal toxin. Delayed type hypersensitivity. What is delayed type hypersensitivity? Okay, perfect. Symptoms, sore throat, general malaise, fever, characteristic red rash. So you all, you guys have to put a lot of effort in your next semester when you will be revising a lot of things. Ask your teacher, Make sure you revise majority or major things of all the subjects like microbiology, some, some general medically important bacteria, viruses, fungus, protozoa, uh, which are why medically important because they are disease causing in humans, most typical ones. And then like this in every subject, the common and important topics which can give you an overall review, a good review you know, an aggressive session of, of a review of medical studies you need in the next semester to know. So this is caused by septococcal toxin. Symptoms are sore throat, general malaise, fever, characteristic red rash. This red rash is a characteristic found on the upper chest, red cheeks, red rash of scarlet fever and red strawberry tongue, red cheeks, red rash, red strawberry tongue, scarlet fever. Later on, a white coating on tongue can also be seen. So it looks like a raspberry. How to spot scarlet fever? How to diagnose scarlet fever? Fine red rash feels like sandpaper. Sandpaper like, so it has rough, White coating on tongue that peels after a few days, leaving it swollen and red. So this white coating on tongue, it peels after a few days. Not like a kind of pharyngitis where there is whitish or grayish layer which you try to scrap, it causes bleeding. That is not scarlet fever. Because this white coating on tongue will peel after a few days, leaving it swollen and red, also known as strawberry tongue. Fever, high grade, flushed red face, 
this flushed red face will cause red cheeks red cheeks so red cheeks red rash red strawberry tongue but pale around the mouth swollen glands on the neck giving it giving it like mumps but this is scarlet fever you have, you need to distinguish you need to know your infections to distinguish the oral mucosa is red and the tongue undergoes pathognomonic change the dorsum the dorsum of tongue develops a white coating this is white coated tongue through which white edematous swollen fungiform papilla projects you remember fungiform papilla i hope you do this is known as the strawberry tongue of scarlet fever later the white co white coating is shed and the dorsum becomes smooth and red with large fungiform papilla raspberry tongue so we have strawberry tongue excuse me we have strawberry tongue edematous fungiform papilla or fungiform papilla project out and later the white coating will peel off giving it a raspberry tongue appearance red cheeks red rash on chest red strawberry tongue raspberry tongue streptococcal toxin streptococcal toxin i mean giving causing delay type hypersensitivity reaction okay so scarlet fever what is it an infection caused by group a streptococcal azotoxin are released which cause rash and fever note that 20% of health healthy children are colonized with strep a in their throat and skin so 20% of the children which are healthy they have a colony of strep a in their throat and skin what are the symptoms we have fever we have sore throat we have general malaise 12 to 48 hours later we have sand paper appearing rash which appears like sand paper rough pastial line are dark hyperpigmented areas particularly in the skin creases there will be lines there will be dark sometimes seen can also get perioral pallor so the cheeks are red but around the oral cavity around the lips they will be pale it will be pale making it making the cheeks more prominent more reddish because the pale area will make the cheeks pronounced and then we have cervical lymph adenopathy and strawberry tongue do not forget symptoms is all within a week can get peeling skin on fingers after this perfect rash the rash usually starts on abdomen and spreads to the neck and limb it feels rough like sand paper sand paper sand paper like rash scarlet fever as for as scarlet fever there is fever there is often a red face with perioral perioral pallor excuse me do i treat most mild cases get better on their own within a week however it is highly contagious and there is a risk of transmission to someone who is vulnerable like immunocompromised or with comorbidity patients or co-existent chicken pox these are vulnerable group please stay away this is a also a low risk of suppurative suppurative means sinusitis and tonsil abscess and then also non suppurative rheumatic fever complications treatment is within is with 10 days of penicillin 10 days of penicillin you can give or azithromycin if he is allergic from penicillin and exclusion periods children need to be excluded for 24 hours of antibiotics so when you start 24 antibiotics for 24 hours you need to get the child isolated or excluded from the public areas or other child and it will be usually excluded and the treatment with no treatment with treatment we have 24 hours exclusion and with no treatment you need to exclude or isolate the child from public areas or schools for two weeks because it is resolved within one week and then there is prodromal or infectious period still going on diagnosis is usually clinical a throat swab or scraping may be appropriate in some cases 